so this period in August is like the quietest like part of the year, right? It's like the calm before the storm. I'm always very excited before, uh, well, very excited. Um, I'm not sure that's the right word to use, but uh, market crashes happen in September and October often. And so this is where you get the sort of rumblings of that sort of thing happening. And okay. because people aren't, um, you don't get a bunch of uh, clout chasing from FinTwit influencers on, in August. You don't get a bunch of um, a, a huge mess of data uh, coming out. You're more able to pick out things that uh, that might be interesting. So, so that's what I did this. Um, that's what I did this week. I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at the list I sent you, but I wanted to start off with um, uh, with this tweet from uh, Level SIO. Actually, let me pull it up here. <laughs> Deadlift ETF. I like that's it. That's right. Yeah. Okay. It's a fairly limited range of data, but interesting. So just to read it here, the person was saying, I made a deadlift person, level SIO on, on X, was saying, I made a deadlift ETF with only companies with CEOs that lift weights or do fight sports, not just cardio. It outperforms the S&P 500 by 140% uh, or 2.4X over the last four years. Lift and weights equals dollars. <laughs> um, what I find funny about this uh, or very interesting about this is that... Um, this is on the heels of our conversation from last week where it's like, okay, AI and being able to surface information in a broad way, what kind of new things will, um, will people come up with? Mm -hmm. And, um, I would expect, uh, people to have their own, own custom ETFs or indexes, um, per se, uh, to help with their investment strategies. I know I, I've, I've had clients who have done that. They'll like, um, they'll, you know, we've seen stuff like, um, these are the meme cryptos uh, index. If you want to, uh, to to have exposure to that, or um, I used to have <laughs> my own index for uh, funerals, cemeteries, um, anything anything to do with that, because I thought it was uh, the the data that I would get from from that was it was very consistent what would happen there. Um, so uh, because. Uh, the way that oh I don't want to go into that, but essentially I had an index for uh, for cemeteries and funeral homes, um, and then also another one for warehousing. So it had this war warehousing index that uh, that performed very well, um, uh, and that they're all correlated with each other is is particularly interesting. But this idea of going even further that more than just the sector that the uh, that the company is in, but to the behavior of people within the the company. Ooh, I want more of that. Thank you very much. Yeah. This is an interesting one. Um, I'll I'll try to contain myself when it comes to what I feel is the obvious selection bias as well as like survivorship bias with this this particular strategy. Not to mention the extremely short timeline on it. Um, the I think the benefit or the portfolio performance is largely coming from the benefit the tech has seen over the last four years that you know, would have obviously contributed to this uh, more than the S&P 500. So if anything, you know, what what he's really done is created a portfolio of basically most of the MAG7 constituents here, Meta, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA. Like, I don't think this is necessarily the the deadlift <laughs> ETF, but rather you, you chose the best uh, uh, tech stocks to, to make up most of your weighted portfolio. Um, <laughs> it's a funny way to view the market though. I've never considered that there is this like, uh, attention that investors have on the, uh, physique of the CEO. And more importantly, it seems like CEOs across the, the, the landscape are really trying to up their, their look. How many glow ups have we seen now? I mean, this list totally kind of points it out, right? Um, uh, clearly Sundar needs to, to get in the gym because, uh, <laughs> Google's performance has not been great lately. <laughs> <laughs> well, this whole um, my wife's been trying to get me into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which seems oh, to be yeah. like all that these people are are doing. Um, and I have to make sure she never sees this because she's gonna be like, "Well, this correlates <laughs> with success." Tom, go ahead and do that. Um, but you just gave me a great idea. What uh, what I need to do instead? Uh, forget about the index. If I want to farm engagement on Twitter, I should just uh, shove these. Um, ETF, sorry, shove the uh, the Mag Seven or the 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 high end tech stocks into an AI and tell me how could I reframe it? What's what uh, what's common amongst these seven stocks that I could call it a new type of ETF ETF and say that I've been successful? Yeah. Um, so I could just do that. I kind of I kind of want to ride this wave though. I mean, if John and I decide we should go public, I mean, I, I feel like I'm already on the right track. I I can tell you right now that the gym <laughs> is that way. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> all I need to do is just, you know, get a little bit bigger, a little more obvious <laughs> that I've been lifting lately. So, and then, then where you go, we'll just, we'll pair that. We'll pair all of my photo shoots from the gym with our IPO. That's and then right. we should be uh, submitted to the deadlift ETF. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Perfect.